Hey folks, welcome back. So today, I'm not in the frame, but that's okay. <laughs> so today we're going to make a tool that we're going to need for our fire pit. Um, you know, honestly, it may seem like such a simple concept, but the problem is a lot of people like to kind of make things more difficult than they need to be. When we're pounding our stakes in to hold up our thermal wall, um, they're generally going to be pretty thick. And although we're going to put a point on them, sometimes the ground's just too hard to drive in or the mallet that we're going to make or the maul that we're going to make or our axe um, may not be quite heavy enough to drive those things in effectively. So what we tend to do is make what's called a pilot stick. Um, I never really hear anybody talk about this, but it makes things easier. If you're doing woodworking or even metal, um, before we drill a big hole, a lot of times we drill a smaller hole just to get that bit set. Um, it allows that bit to come through without biting too much, without ripping things apart, and without getting jammed. Well, when I'm driving posts or I'm driving stakes in the ground and things like that, I like to make a pilot as well. So if I'm using a three to four inch log and it's got a point and I'm driving that into the ground, there's gonna be a lot of resistance to that thing as I'm driving it in. So what I'll do is I'll make a smaller stick called a pilot stick to start the hole so to make it easier for me to drive the stake. And the way we do that is pretty simple. I'll try to bring you closer here so you can see. Let me, let me do my fancy camera work here for you. There we go. So we're just gonna gently come up this stick about this far, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by choking up on our ax a bit and just tapping into it. Now I got a knot here so it might make it a little bit tougher. And once we break that up a bit, we're just gonna slide straight down like that, okay? So we'll go to the next side, do the same thing. Now this is a hard wood because I don't want a soft wood and have it break off while I'm driving it into the ground because I'm gonna to wanna to pull this back out after I drive it into the ground. I'm gonna come all the way around this, just taking these little jabs and you notice I got my legs back. If this ax comes down, it's gonna hit this stump. And just keep on going and I'm just leaning on the top of this stick it's a nice hard oak branch basically and once I got all this outer bark off of here I can start making my point or wedge to get it going so what I'm gonna do I'm sitting pretty far back here it's hard to tell in the camera angle but I'm about two feet away from the stump I'm just going to take it and I'm going to grip the back of my axe now, like this, to get a little more leverage, a little more swing, and allowing the axe head to do the work. Just tilt it to the side just a little bit. Turn it to the next side, so I got a flat on this side. I'm going to turn it to the other side do the same thing. And I'm not looking for a fine point, kind of a blunt point. So that's what we have right there, okay? Nice blunt point. The reason we do that is because I can take that now and come on top of this thing and drive it into the ground to start my hole. Once I get it down in there and I'm happy with how far it is, I just wiggle back and forth a bit to loosen up that ground a little bit, okay? And I'll pull it out and do my next one. That way when I go to drive a bigger stake into the ground, I don't have as much resistance. Now, where I'm sitting right now, there's a lot of roots and things. I wouldn't even dream of putting it here. But where we're making our fire pit, the ground is semi-soft, it's clay, um, you know, it's topsoil clay, weeds, there's some roots and everything. But this pilot stick's going to give me less resistance than one of those bigger stakes will. Okay? So, I use pilot sticks a lot. But, another thing I could use this for, if I flatten out the end here, 
And I can still use it as a pilot stick once I do this. I flatten out the end just like that. Like, let me see if I can show it to you here. Like that. Now I have a digging stick. So if you didn't bring a shovel for your fire pit, you can use this to dig out that dirt and get it out of your way, okay? I can use the other end as a mallet, beater stick. This one's a little hollow up here, but solid down here. What else could I do with this? Well, I could cut this off right here if I was making something else, and I can use this as a wedge to split a log with, okay? So just by doing this one task, and this is kind of the purpose of doing the fire pit um, lessons here, by doing a simple task like this, I've learned how to make multiple tools, okay? I've learned how to make a pilot stick for pre-drilling a hole that I'm gonna pound a bigger stake into, um, which is great for when you're building your shelters and things like that, or you're building fencing to put up around your, your camp, whatever it may be. Um, I've made a digging stick to dig out dirt out of my way, or even to clear out that hole a little bit more, dig it up, right? Soften up the dirt a bit to make it easier to pound my stakes into. I can use the other end to pack the dirt in around my posts and stakes, so I can go in all around, make sure they're in there nice and tight. I can use this as a mallet, so if I need to split wood, it's safer to do it like this than it is to say, try to do something like holding a little stick and pounding it down through. Instead, what I could do is take this like this and give it some little taps and split it like that. It makes it a lot safer. So then we have our wedge. We can make these wedges. I'd angle it on the other side as well. Cut this off, say about six inches up, make a few of these, and now I have splitting wedges, hardwood splitting wedges, that I can use for splitting logs. And what I would do, as I mentioned the other day, is I dip these or brush these with used motor oil. Just bring it out in a container and brush all your hardwood tools with used motor oil, and that'll help preserve them so when you leave them at your camp, they're not gonna rot while you're gone, okay? The other thing is, notice my stump. Now this is a lower stump. I use this around camp a lot. Um, you've probably seen it in past videos. I, I set my coffee on it. Sometimes I'm sitting on it. Sometimes I'm splitting wood on it. Um, sometimes I turn it sideways if I want to sit down a little bit lower. If I have a low shelter, I'll, I'll, I'll lay it sideways. Um, I have a, um, a little branch offshoot here. There's another one here. Those aren't necessary, but I like to hang some of my stuff on there. Uh, with my mask on my axe, I might hang my axe there. Um, but also, this is my anvil. This is my working place. Um, maybe I'm processing this isn't the kind of branches I would use or twigs I would use, but maybe I want to process um, the inner bark of this for cordage. So I could sit here on this nice little stump that I got and break up the bark. I'm breaking the fibers to make it easier to peel this stuff away to make cordage. Now this is oak, I wouldn't use this of course, but you get the picture. I can I can break up the fibers to make it easier for me to do things. What else could I use this stump for? Well, what if I was making some toggles or feather sticks or anything of that nature? I might, I want a stop block for when I'm using my knife. So maybe I'm gonna use my knife as a draw like that, right? Maybe I'm gonna stick it in like this to use it to make fine shavings to get my fire going. Or just maybe I'm doing some simple carving tasks and I wanna have something safe to rest against. Maybe I'm doing something like carving something down or getting some bark off of something. I can rest this on my shoulder or my chest and I can use the other end on top of the stump to do more controlled work. The stump around camp is probably one of the most versatile tools you could possibly have along with things like your all your mallets, 
pilot sticks, digging sticks. So this is the beginning. I know it may seem simple, but a lot of people don't realize a lot of these tasks or these tools that you see in the, the bushcraft or woodcraft or outdoorsy community, the real purpose of these things is to teach you how to control your tools, how to do basic wedges, points, notches, um, how to make small things that are versatile and useful so you can later construct bigger things using that same methodology on a larger scale. This is my sit down stump. If I was going to do a, a working stump like when I was holding this down and chopping on it with my axe, if I'm doing bigger stuff, I'm gonna have a stump that's more uh, pretty much up to my waist. So if I'm standing, I kinda wanna make sure my, my fingers are at least down to the stump. So if I close my fist, I want my knuckles to reach that stump. This stump's a little bit short for that. So I'd want something here so when I'm down here, I'm not bending over all the time working. I'm standing straight up and I can work right off that stump. So that's something I would cut. And you might you don't have to fell trees to do that. Look around your woodland. You're probably a lot of logs laying down. Um, I can see about six or seven from just from where I'm sitting right now that I could easily cut up. Now when you're making your wedges, if you're going to be splitting wood with them or splitting logs with them, things like that, try to make your wedges out of a hardwood, whether it's cherry, oak, ash, uh, blue beech, which is muscle wood. Um, and when you cut those things, try to cut them low, the sapling low to the ground, and use the wood that's the closest to the bottom of the tree. That's where you're going to find the tighter annual rings, the tighter, um, harder woods. But just go out in your backyard if you're not if you're not out in the woods right now. Go out in the backyard and find yourself a nice hardwood branch or see if a neighbor has one down or along the roadside where a piece of oak might have fell or something like that. Um, get yourself a stump. I'm sure you got some local tree cutters around that'd be more than happy to give you a stump of wood um, and practice on it. Um, with your stump, your anvil, basically, your working area, and a good hand hatchet or even a light camp axe you can do these tasks pretty easy but you're going to need this tool right here to start your pilot holes um, is it necessary no but it's going to make your life a lot easier so i hope that helps out i don't know if anybody's ever taught you that using a pilot stick before um, but i figured i'd mention the stump because we're going to use that a lot we're going to use the pilot stick a lot and we're going to be making a lot of wedges in the future so this is good practice um, on something, it's a sacrificial stick. So we're not too concerned if we don't get it quite right right now. Um, we're getting good for functional. And if it doesn't work out, we can always make another one and we're not wasting too many resources. But it's gonna teach you these, these skills and ax control. Um, I use my ax much more than I use my knife, surprisingly. Um, so I use my knife for finer tasks, but my ax is mainly what I use for all the bigger carving and and notches and wedges and things that I do uh, more so than my knife. But even this kind of thing, if I wanted to put a V-notch into a piece of wood or something, I could put that wood there on my stump, put my ax on it, use my stick, and pound right into it, All right? So this one tool that we just created can be used for a lot of different things. I think people look around and they're like, well, it's just a stick. It's not just a stick. It's one of your new woodcraft tools. And you'll find that when you find a really good one, a really, really dense, hard one that's harder to, to wedge and chop and everything, once you have it done, you're probably going to want to drill a hole in it, put a lanyard on it, and hang it at your camp to use for the future. Um, don't forget to coat those wood tools that you make with oil, um, vegetable oil, use motor oil, whatever. I like to use motor oil for that kind of thing. And uh, get yourself a stump to work off of. So in the future, um, you're going to be prepared for the further woodcraft skills that we're going to do. In the next video, we're actually, once this rain clears up for me, we're actually going to finish our thermal wall for our fire pit because we got a few other projects we're going to do around that fire pit um, that's going to make our camping life a lot more productive, easy, and fun, and allow us to make more things because we're going to be making a workbench in the future. Um, you might have saw a start of it in one of my last videos I was talking about my tools. Um, we're going to be making some workbenches, some different types of workbenches for our camp um, and some benches to sit on <laughs> for our camp. 
Um, so stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Take care. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and all that jazz. See ya.